Good morning, everybody. So we've been camping the last two nights at the town of Beauvoir, which is three mile walk from the famous Le Mont Saint-Michel. It's a uh, over a thousand year old island, kind of a community. I think originally it was uh, built for defense purposes. This car coming. That's. It was originally built over a thousand years ago because an easily defensible position on high tide it is not accessible. But on low tide, you could get to just uh, by walking on the sandbars on the marsh. It's honestly kind of tough to find good wild camping around this region because it is very popular. And during like a normal year, I think this place gets like millions of visitors outside of paris this is one of the more popular places to go to in france all of france pretty much tourism wise so we didn't want to miss it but we didn't also want to get here you know and be super crowded with a bunch of people but because of covid it's uh it was pretty quiet our original plan was to not be here on the weekend, but today's Sunday. We got here Friday. It ended up we we're here only on the weekend. On a whim, we decided to walk just to go check it out from a distance, but we ended up walking all the way there yesterday. Our original plan was to be here for two days and leave here on Sunday and go to a, uh, a cider place. They have these local cider Kind of they call them breweries but they make ciders out of the local apples they let you sleep overnight if you're a customer we were going to go today which is sunday to stay the night at the cider place and then walk over to see mont saint michel tomorrow morning but yesterday we thought you know what let's just walk over to the uh, main road and see it from a distance check it out so I didn't bring my wallet, didn't bring my mask, didn't bring my camera, didn't bring my phone, didn't bring anything. Just the keys. And then we ended up walking all the way there. Three miles there, three miles back. Kids were not too thrilled about all the walking. It was really cool to, uh, you know, because you see it from really far away. Really far in the distance, you start to see this monstrosity of a thing. The old monastery built on an island like a kilometer offshore so yeah we walked over there and ended up just checking out the whole place well as much as we could without actually going in so it was cool which means today we don't have to go to the cider place anymore we can just leave and that's what we're doing we're gonna pack up we're gonna get out of here This place is 1650 euros a night, which comes out to what about 18 19 dollars. Completely self service, there's nobody on staff at all. There's one number that you can call, which uh, says only call in dire emergencies. And we couldn't figure out how to extend our stay for the second night, and we almost called, <laughs> which I thought was really a bad idea. It's nice because it's got electricity, has water. Unlike a lot of the campsites in America, this is what they call an air, which is not a full on camping place. In Europe, they have these airs in a lot of countries, which is kind of like a souped up rest area. They're designed for campers. This particular one is for motorhomes and vans. No trailers allowed and trailers they're called caravans here so um people people are pretty good at self-policing nobody tries to pull a trailer in here even though there's nobody 
here to stop you. So, and it's not that crowded. You can probably fit over a hundred, at least, campers in here. And I say this is about half full. Not an ideal place for us because, you know, it's a lot of people and it's also um, not the ideal place for us to just let a cat loose. Inside the lifting gates, you have uh, water spigots that you can fill. And there's like four different water spigots. All but one of them has water coming straight from the ground. The rest of them are connected via above ground pipes, which means on a sunny day like this, all the water is hot, except for that one. So we go back there to fill up our water so we don't get the hot water in our tanks. But on the other hand, if you want a hot water for like washing dishes or whatever, it's kind of cool. So, so to get in and out, when you pay, you get a uh, code, a eight digit code. And you can come in and out unlimited times. Let's see if we can get out of here. There we go. We have been released. Last night, we literally camped at a French chateau. I don't know how big this property is. It's pretty big. Probably 50 plus acres, like the sprawling land in its ocean front. Really cool. This is uh, on the eastern side of the Brittany region of France. We just got here. We are on the slightly west of St. Malo. Is the uh, closest biggish town from here. We found this place and had really good reviews. People kept talking about how quiet and serene it is. And they're right. It is very quiet, very serene. Assuming there's not too many other campers here. We got here yesterday and we're the only people here for probably about 20 minutes and then somebody came right away we were pretty happy because it was empty it was a big plot of land there's trees they have tree houses you can rent they actually have rooms in the chateau it's kind of like an airbnb type setup people can live or people can rent the rooms in the chateau and they have sheep on the property i'm not sure exactly what their main business is i don't think airbnb or vacation rental is uh, their primary business but they do it, and they also let campers come. It's 10 euros a night. No amenities, not even trash, I don't think. But really great spot though. Yesterday, by the end of the day, we did have a total of, I think, six or seven vans that showed up. Almost all, except for one, left uh, by noon today. Here's one of the tree houses. You can stay in that too. I don't know how much it costs, but I'll put a link to uh, this place down in the description so you guys can check it out. Go that way or this way? We went this way. Yeah. I think there's a beach down there. So I think this way. All right. And it's parts of it is just like this. It's really heavily foliaged. Really cool to walk through. We haven't walked down here yet. This is our first time trying to walk down to go see the water because the tidal changes are really drastic here. You have to time it just right. If you don't time it right, you can get down there. There could be hundreds of yards of just muck. So today, high tide is at 3.30. It's about three o'clock right now. So we should be able to get down there and have the highest water level for the next hour or so before any noticeable tide recession could happen. So let's go check it out, see how it is. We just gotta find our way. And we can tell where we're walking though. Mm hmm. What do they see on the floor? That's like one looking thing. We're going down, so that's a good sign. And there's a gate up here. 
Let's see if it opens. Maybe this is the end of their property. Oh yeah, there's a beach. Do you want to go that one? Maybe we should go the other way. I think it's going to look like that. Okay, just, let's just peek the other way and see what options we have. So the last two days we stayed at the, uh, well, not last night, but the two nights before that. We stayed at a uh, campground inside a town, inside a village. And the cats didn't get to roam really at all by themselves. So they're really happy here. They're just galloping up and down the grass. There were some dogs here. The one lady that's left has one dog, but she's really good about keeping her dog on a leash. She will chase the cats, she said, but uh, her dog is more about uh, hunting for truffles, apparently. I've been trying to diagnose this clunking sound in the rear suspension for a while now, and seems to have gotten progressively worse. So, I put a camera down there while I was driving a port a little bit and I noticed that the end link bushing where it connects to the rear sway bar is moving and when it moves, it makes a clunking sound. And I've tried tightening the bolt and uh, it doesn't really solve the problem and I feel like I'm gonna crank it too tight and something bad's gonna happen. So, I think what's happened is, uh, you know, it came loose or it wasn't tightened properly at some point. And that just kinda deformed the metal sleeve. So, now I gotta either shim it or get a new metal sleeve made. So that's my goal for the next few days, is try to figure out how to do that project. So I've got a couple leads on uh, where I can do that here in France. Now I just gotta figure out how to tune out my French so I can communicate with people that work at machine shops. Well, this looks treacherous. Careful. Treacherous. Ah. Tree fell. This way, or this way? This way, or this way? This way. Look at that! They're restoring a castle. That thing looks old. I'm gonna walk this way through the better area. There's more people there. There might be bigger beaches over there. Yeah, that's the boat, so maybe there's a bigger beach. Maybe. Let's go look at it. Okay, let's go check it out. This is definitely not the clear Adriatic. It's so mucky. It's not that cold though. I mean, it's cold, but it feels kind of refreshing aside from the fact that you can't see your hand the second you put it in the water. So we keep seeing these people walking over here tapping on these rocks and you can see all the marks they've made when they tap on these rocks. I remember seeing something about them calling these singing rocks or somewhere on Google Maps calling these things like singing rocks. So let's see what actually happens. All right, how does it work, Ava? Just lock on it. Like from one of the white areas. Like, look at it. Move this up. I can do it. That one's really echoey. Yeah. Let's do another one. Well, that one's nothing. No. No! Yeah, that one's really echoey. That one's the most echoey. Yeah. Okay, just try that one. Open 
That one sounds good. You know, do that one. No, uh, nothing. Oh, it's not even white. What if uh, one day, you think this little dent is just from people tapping on it yes. over the years? <laughs> what else would it be here? <laughs> That's crazy. You see, there's already like, dust here from people tapping yeah. on it. They got little rock Daddy, chips down here. Really yeah. Actually, what about this one over here? It's made of metal. Well, these ones have been tapped on. Oh, this one, Daddy, this one. Okay, listen to this one, Daddy. Listen. Rock in one place that doesn't make sound, but people hit it and thinking there'll be sound. Just keep tapping at it until it turns wide. You can be here a while. Don't worry. What about that one? Not so much. This one? <laughs> She's got the biggest rock you see. <laughs> I think that one's the best one. What? Make rock is breaking. Yeah. This one has all kinds of dents. Whoa. Oh. Making a ringing noise. This one's kind of good. Not really. Look at this is normal rock. This is a rock. Interesting. 